Welcome to MMA Fan Guys. My name is Luke Pace and welcome back for all of those of you who are already subscribers to the channel. Really appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe so that you can see more great interviews, including the upcoming guest. We have a lot of great guests on the show all the time. Our returning guest, haven't had him on in a while. And since Dylan Harnish was last on the show, he has since become an amateur MMA champ for Maverick and a two-division amateur kickboxing champ for USKA. Welcome to the show, triple champ, triple C, Dylan Harnish. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a while since I got to talk to you, so this is going to be cool. It has been a while. It, let's jump in first, I think, chronologically, if we can. Most recently, just a couple days ago, you're kind enough to jump on. You fought for the 150-pound belt for USKA owner Gary Grant, a guy I've known for years, and you were fighting for him a long time ago. I've known you for a long time in that in that eastern Pennsylvania region. You had won two belts, really one, and then defended at 145. What made you jump up the weight class to 150? How'd that fight come together? So we're going to start with that fight. Then we're going to work backwards in time. So honestly, I didn't really want to fight at a 150, considering I just fought at 135 last month. I only had like a, a five, five or six week turnaround. Um, Gary, uh, like you said, I've been with him for a long time. I've been fighting for him since I was 18. I'm, I'm 23 now. And uh, after I got his a couple of his titles, we decided to bring a show close to home. And I got to fight five minutes from where I'm sleeping mm -hmm. at night. So uh, a couple of fights fell through at, at, at 145. Uh, two guys turned it down and they had a guy at 150 who was a little bit bigger. So he couldn't do this, the same day weigh ins at 45. So they offered another belt and another weight class. And I wasn't going to say no to that fight not close to home. Wow. Yeah, I saw that it was the Cole, Cole something uh, arena or something. I didn't recognize that as something that USK has done before. So how special of that. Shout out to Gary Grant and everybody on USK to make an event. I know you said on Facebook how much it was a hometown crowd and you gave respect to your opponent for coming in to an area that he knew the crowd would be che cheering against him. I saw the pictures. You posted a lot of video. Clearly, you knew that there was going to be a height and reach advantage to your to your opponent you got the win uh how much did that factor into training and planning for it how much did that actually factor in to the fight itself or did you feel like once you were in there you didn't really feel it or was the whole fight were you very aware of the reach and still made it work it was kind of a little bit of both you know the whole training camp he's five foot ten five foot eleven a, a lot of legs a lot of arms um I feel confident getting in boxing exchanges with, with just about anybody that I'm going to fight. I feel like my speed and, and technique is going to be able to overwhelm people. Uh, so I wanted to stay outside of his kicking range. But as I got in there, um, I, I kind of just seen everything coming. He was just a little bit slower where I would be able to make reads and, and land some good teeps up the middle and uh, and rear round kicks in the southpaw orthodox stance. So I, I mixed it up pretty well with the boxing and the and the kicking in the fight to to kind of secure the win. Yeah, that's exactly the little bit that you were able to to share, which is great. You shared a bunch of different clips, uh, really showed all of what you're you're talking about. Super fast hands. I'm sure that there's a flow state for people that don't know. That means where you're doing whatever sport you're doing and it's more muscle memory. You're seeing and reacting, whatever that happens to be. It looked like you were throwing three to five punch combos. Are these combos that you're thinking through? Some people do in a fight or is it that flow state where – you're just kind of throwing volume and accuracy as it comes without thinking it through. It really, it's working for you regardless of how you're right. doing. Yeah. Um, I, I really didn't find that state. I, I've been on a pretty good run here. I won about five fights in a row yeah. um, uh, between kickboxing and uh, MMA. And a couple of those losses that I took um, outside of, of Christian Bobby and Alan Liu, I lost a couple of MMA fights that to people I don't think I should have lost to. And I blame that on, on my mentality. So um, I just didn't show up all mentally there. And I'd get out there and kind of just freeze up. And and learning from those losses really helped. You know what I mean? Now it's just like I'm going out there and uh, he wants to do something bad to me. So I'm not going to let that happen. And just having that mentality and just letting my skills show, that I think that's the success for my run that I'm on now. Well, that's perfect. You took the question I was going to ask. I knew you were on 
quite a bit of a run. And there is always that blend of physical talent and the mental mindset. And obviously in this case, it sounds like the mental mindset has to be a little bit more uh, aggressive, a little bit more um, proactive, like you were saying, the mindset that, yeah, it's a sport. It is a sport. This is not illegal street fighting. There's a ref. I saw the ref in the videos. There's, there's points and all that. But at the same time, he means you harm. You have to come in with that intensity to mean him harm as well. And obviously five wins in a row. And we're going to get right now to the fact that this has not been a one sport run. It's impressive when somebody go, goes on a five fight win streak in MMA or kickboxing, but it's even more impressive for the fact that your win streak covers both MMA and kickboxing. So now let's switch over to the fact that in early December, just a month and two weeks ago before your recent fight, you were fighting for the Maverick Bantamweight, which is 135 pounds, amateur MMA. So obviously you have the kickboxing, but there's a lot more to be concerned about, a lot more to train. How is it to switch back and forth? How does the training work so that you're that ready to take on a guy that had a lot of experience, very, very well versed in, uh, I think he had, yeah, you were his 10th, if I'm looking at it right, yep, you were his 10th amateur MMA fight, if I'm looking at that right, and you were in your you were in your ninth. So you talk about like two really experienced MMA fighters. How did you prepare for it? And what did it feel like in there? You got a really great, no doubt about it, not a decision, a submission, second round win by Rene Kachuk. But how did all that come together? What's it like training back and forth? Um, it, it Training for MMA is a lot harder. There's so much more to worry about. Um, if I'm in shape, I think I could get off the couch and compete in high-level kickboxing at, at this stage. Um, I was always a striker first. You, you were calling my fights for USK in 2018. So I, I was always in the kickboxing world. And it's it's something that I always tended to lean towards more. Uh, my coach got his black belt from Zach Maslany and uh, Eddie and stuff. We're at 10th Planet School now. So once I started climbing the ranks in, in uh, the MMA world, I really, really started hammering down on jujitsu. I just got my purple belt. Um, and I won two MMA fights. Um by submission in a row so it's just showing that you know when you put your mind to things and I, I was really hammering down those skills because I knew my hands and my feet were sharp so there was just a couple fine-tuning things I needed to do on the ground and and uh that's how those victories came about yeah that also shows that that also shows the the value of obviously I mean this goes without saying but I'm gonna say it the value of progressing in your skills you know you have a great gym you've been connecting for a long time they're obviously one of the affiliate uh, Eddie Bravo, 10th Planet, meaning they follow sort of protocols and plannings. I, I know that's pretty popular with Bang, Muay Thai as well, and I don't think you guys are a Bang gym. But regardless, gyms sometimes come up with their own style. I think it's awesome when gyms kind of have their own coaching, own style, own techniques. But I don't think there's anything wrong. I think it is part of mixed martial arts and Muay Thai and kickboxing is to do what works, is to have some stratosphere, you know, have some strategy and plan obviously you're up to purple belt so congrats on that it is tough for people that don't know it is tough to progress in any one martial arts whether it's karate or shotokan or taekwondo or tank sudo um or brazilian jiu-jitsu but it's even tougher to progress in both but i think it's good for the mma mind to be learning increasingly difficult jiu-jitsu while you're also keeping sharp on uh muay thai i think that's great for and kickboxing i think that's great for your mind you did win back to back by ninja choke which is a pretty unique choke we don't get to see it a lot mma rear naked choke rear naked choke is probably if i looked at the ufc finishes probably the most often submission finish but that doesn't mean it's the easiest thing it's just you still got to practice on it um the question has been raised because of your experience you're 23 so you're right. still very young you've had a ton of experience i think you're up to around 10 MMA fights, plus probably at least that, if not more on kickboxing Muay Thai, you're defending amateur belts. You could potentially defend the Maverick amateur belt. I know there was talk on Facebook potentially about you possibly having fought your last amateur fight and turning to the pro ranks. What are your thoughts just two and a half days, two days after your most recent title fight where you became a double champ USK amateur champ? What are your thoughts I'll potentially go and pro. Yeah, this was my 20th amateur fight between a, a boxing, kickboxing, and MMA. 
So I, I, I don't really don't have, have much more to prove in the amateur ranks, in my opinion. And, and you know what I mean? I haven't had that sit down talk to make things official with my team and my coaches, but uh, all discussions were kind of leading towards it being the last amateur fight and, and fighting's not a fairy tale and it's, it's, it's never a happy ending, but I'll tell you fighting five minutes from my hometown with, with all those people there uh, the last 10 seconds of the fight, we pointed to the ground and I said, let's bang. And, and uh, we, we slugged it out for the last 10 seconds and the crowd popped. The place was wild. Uh, that's about as close to a storybook ending as you could put on an amateur career. So uh, it's looking that way. But I haven't had the official sit down discussion with my team yet. And I completely respect that. That's part of you being under good coaching, good team. You know, this it, a lot of times some, let's say Conor McGregor and others, some sort of fight that brash style where they look like they're hotheads and they're making their own decisions. I actually think he probably listens to his head coach a lot, given his discipline and his success. But regardless, I think it's great that it, by all intents and purposes, it looks like you're ready to go pro. Obviously that's up to the gym and kind of what makes sense for you. You've clearly been in the local area around there a long time. I'm sure Gary Grant, he's put on incredible pro uh, cards I've seen some of them you know and obviously you also have MMA this is more of just a guess so don't feel obligated but if you had a guess is it more likely that you dip your toes into the pro ranks in Muay Thai or kickboxing first or is it more likely you do it in MMA or does that literally depend on situation fight offer all those type things I think it's safe to say I'll take a pro MMA fight before I do anything else. The goal is to get, get as high into the MMA world as I could. But uh, like you said with Gary, um, he's been dealing with me since I was an 18-year-old kid. Um, it's a slimy business, man. Uh, the martial arts world is a, it's a slimy business. And uh, he's one of the few good ones. You know what I mean? It, it was uh, We got to share a couple tears with each other, just reminiscing and, and seeing the crowd and, and stuff like that. Um, so when I turn pro, there's with no doubt in my mind that I'll be having pro fights in kickboxing as well. And it, my goal is not to, to be a glory kickboxing world champion mm -hmm. by any means. Um, if glory offered me a fight, I would take it though. I'll tell you that. Um, but I'll always fight for Gary, um, especially if he's going to bring a show that close, close to home again. Uh, we will both leave financially happy with that. So. Well, that makes perfect sense. I'm thinking back to Bill, Algio, I mean, he's currently in the UFC, but he had put on, it, there was a time where he was UFC bound. He might have, I don't think he was in the UFC yet, but it, he was obviously Senior Perfecto. I still remember his uh, fight name. It's a great name. And he runs a local MMA and kickboxing gym in King of Prussia, I believe. And uh, there was a time where he was like right at that level of UFC and was still fighting for USKA, uh, Gary Grant at that high level for pro. So I do think it can work to go back and forth. It makes perfect sense, I think, given that your goal is to get as high up in MMA as possible. Why is that you and your team's goal to pursue MMA over, let's say, something like just batting it down and trying to be glory? Obviously, you'll take both. But why is MMA your current sort of focus to the best of your ability? <laughs> it, it, it always was. I've always wanted to, to fight MMA. If, if I wasn't having so much success in kickboxing, if I had a couple fights in kickboxing and I went 0-2 or 0-3, oh. I'd be like, all right, we'll stick to MMA and, and hammer down on everything. But if it ain't broke, you know what I mean? Don't fix it. So uh, it's it gives me a face. It gives me a reason to train harder than – it's you know what I mean? When you're training, not in training camp, it's hard to – you know what I mean? You don't have a face. You don't you don't have a date or a, or a weight or anything to really strive for. So I, I'm always grappling kickboxing. MMA, whatever it is, just having that face and a date gives me something to work for. That makes that makes perfect sense. You are super talented, and also, you know, your amateur MMA career wasn't without its stumbles. I think that's actually one of the benefits of an amateur career. I know everybody, including announcers and promoters, everybody would love everyone to have an undefeated amateur career because it's kind of easy to build, you know, the, the hype around that. But I actually think an amateur career where you pushed yourself and you picked up some losses. You mentioned two guys that you fought that are at the top of the amateur. Alan Liu hasn't fought in a while. Uh, your other opponent, you know, you mentioned two of those guys that you understood kind of their talent level. Um, you, you obviously had some disappointments that you'd love to get back. But I think 
the mindset, the skill level all develops through losses. And we've seen, I've interviewed guys that obviously looked incredible as amateurs and then kind of have a lot to figure out as pro. You'd much rather figure stuff out as amateur and be a little bit more focused in, in, in pro. So really fantastic having you on the show. A shout out to Gary Grant. Uh, we text every once in a while. I knew this was a huge deal going into this fight for you because you were posting on Facebook. So I got the time to text him a little bit on Friday night, uh, which was really special. Gary's incredible. It was great. Shout out to everybody at USKA. Irv Aldhouse, the original founder of it before it switched over to Gary. Just great guys. And now you as a triple champ, two-time USKA champ, once with a defense and the current bantamweight maverick MMA uh, amateur champ. It's been an absolute honor having you on. Any final words to close this out? This has just been incredible. Can't wait to continue to follow your career in the future. Yeah, I'm always I'm always going to shout out my team and my fans and stuff. Uh, we left another gym in Bloomsburg, Eric Strasser, and and we started our own place. And we're, we're hosting our own grappling shows with Arena Grappling, kind of co-sponsoring that at our gym. The facility we have now is unbelievable. Um, I, I still go cross train at other places. Like, like you said, with Algio, I fought one of his, one of the coaches there and he beat me the first time I beat him the second time. And now we're cool and we train together. So I'm all over the place, 10th planet in Bethlehem as well. Just places I get to cross train at. And, and my, my go-to teammates, Oscar Garcia Jr. He's fighting for a uh, ring of combat in uh, Atlantic city on March 1st. He has a super tough opponent. And, and my focus now until, uh, until I get a fight scheduled is, is making sure he's as ready as he possibly can be to fight because that's what he did for me leading up to these fights. So uh, right now I'm just, I'm just back to helping everybody out until I get something scheduled. Well, that is incredible. I know you need to give a shout out to your gym. It makes perfect sense. Can't wait. I'm going to throw it out on this podcast. I'd love to have uh, your, your teammate on uh, MMA fan guys going out of the country at the end of this week. When I get back, I'd love to reach out and get something scheduled up for him so that so that we could talk about that march that that's going to be incredible you said you were going to give your gym a shout out you didn't actually give the name of it i'm sure most people know it but let's give the actual name and like uh area you know if somebody wants to google it what's what's the uh city of it and what's the name of it so we're midworld martial arts um 10th planet bloomsburg mm-hmm. the mma team is is uh the midworld martials art arch and then the jiu-jitsu programs 10th planet Be- bloomsburg so it's in bloomsburg it's a college town. We get a, a bunch of college wrestlers and football players and stuff and, and young hothead kids that come in and just want to learn. So we're constantly improving and growing. Yeah, that's an incredible that we could probably do an entire show. Please put the invitation out there for your coach. I don't always bring head coaches on, but I've had head coaches come on the show just to talk from the coaching side. I used to coach. It's great to have coach the coach. So please extend the invite. Tim, I'd love to have him on. But what was it like for you as a fighter because it's a big deal. You know, you, you moved with your coach. You kind of are on the foreground of the mid-world uh, martial arts. And obviously, that's years behind. We're not talking anything bad about a previous situation. What was it like to just transition and then grow with this gym? It's, uh, you know what I mean? I've spoke about it before. Uh, I'm never going to publicly put people on blast. You know what I mean? But I, nobody was happy where we were at before. And uh, just drama. You know what I mean? Egos inside of a gym. And uh There was just an issue, personal issues between people. And uh, Eric decided to leave and start his own place. And there was never a thought in my mind that I wouldn't wouldn't go with him. He's he's been by my side since I was 15 years old. Uh, He's cornered every one of my fights. There's not a time that he hasn't been there for the weight cuts, the ups, the downs, the wins, the losses. Uh, He's been there for the whole thing. So there was never a question in my mind that he was going to do something great with the spot that he got. That's that's incredible. And hats off to everyone on the team, as well as obviously Eric, the, the head coach and the owner of it, because it takes a lot of a lot of things have to come together to be successful in MMA. So hats off to, to you and to all from your team. It's just an honor to have you on the show. Can't wait to continue. You've mentioned a couple of times to have been able to watch you in probably your debut kickboxing fight, I would guess, since you were 18. I remember that or at least one of your earliest ones be able to now know that you're close to going pro and hopefully have a career that, that I can continue to be excited and, and support you and be a fan of you as well as have you on the show. True honor to have the triple champ Dylan Arnish from Midworld martial arts. Super awesome. Have you on the show. You take care of happy 2024 to you. Can't wait to see what the rest of the year brings to you and everybody at your team. Thanks so much. Thank you. You take care. You too.